everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we'll be tackling part two of my series giving my controversial opinions on what needs to be changed from the Wheel of Time books as they adapt the series into a television show on Amazon. If you haven't watched part one of the series where I gave my first three changes, go watch that one and come back and watch this video or watch this one and then go watch that one, it doesn't matter. But make sure you watch both. I wanna quickly thank the channel sponsor, audible.com for making this video and many other videos on the channel possible. They've been a supporter of this YouTube channel since almost the very beginning, but more on them a little later. Make sure to go ahead and like this video real quick and subscribe to the channel as it certainly helps us grow here. We're making a push to get to the point where we can hire a couple of folks that are already volunteering their time on thegreatblight.com and your views and support go directly towards that goal. An easy way to help is just to subscribe to the channel. We'll talk more about thegreatblight.com at the end of the video. I'm running two promotions right now, so stay tuned to the end of the video to hear what those are. You can win some cool stuff. Let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. This video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through a memory of light. If you have not finished the series, come back and watch this video once you have. Don't get spoiled, you've been warned. So just like with the previous video in this series, I am offering some controversial changes to the source material that I believe are gonna help bring us a larger and more mainstream audience. These are not criticisms of the books in any ways, just ways that I believe the story can be adapted that will draw in non-Wheel of Time fans to watch the show. Again, that's what's gonna gauge the success of this show or not, is non-Wheel of Time book fans. So let me go ahead and kick this off with probably my least controversial change of the three in this video. My first suggested change comes with the character of Gawain Tracant and his arc throughout the story. In the books, Gawain is present and assists the loyalists when Elida overthrows Swan Sanche in the tower. He helps men, Liana, and Swan escape, but he stays loyal to Elida and the tower and eventually is part of the group that takes Rand from Kyrian and later leads the younglings after Dumai's Wells before defecting to rescue Egwene from the tower and eventually becoming her warder before being killed by Demondred in the last battle. So what's the change that I would make? Well, this is a fairly dramatic change to his arc, but I think it's one that will help him be a more relatable character and give the relationship with Egwene a little bit more weight. My suggestion is rather than remaining in the tower after helping Min, Swan, and Lyanna escape, that he leaves with them and Loghain and travels with them to Saladar. The main reason that I believe this change would help is that him staying behind rather than going to Elaine seems very out of character. Swan could convince him to come under promises to reunite him with his sister, and I believe his presence in Saladar and being around his sister and Egwene and the Aes Sedai there would give him more of a narrative role than what he does, which is basically nothing with the younglings. This would keep him a part of the story, it would flesh out his character more, and it would give more substance to he and Egwene's relationship if they could spend more time together in Saladar. Gawain could also potentially accompany Elaine and Nynaeve to Ebudar. Regardless of which direction his character would go here, I believe that it would be better and more in character to follow his heart rather than staying in Tarvalin, where he knows he's unwanted fighting for a cause that isn't his. I think having him leave Tarvalin will fix some of the people's issues with Gawain as a character, and it's gonna give him a larger part in the story. So let's move on to something I think is gonna be quite a bit more controversial than my first one, but it's something that I think the story could use. My second suggested change would be to have a major character secretly be a dark friend and have their betrayal cause major harm. So let me flesh this out a little bit for everybody. In the story currently, we have some characters who are secret dark friends but very rarely are the major protagonists actually betrayed by these characters. Two notable examples of secret dark friends among the good guys uh, that we root for as an audience are Ingtar and Varen. Ingtar is redeemed with his sacrifice to save the protagonists, and Varen is redeemed at being a double agent and exposing the Black Aja. Everyone else within the story that's a secret dark friend either isn't really a main character or is not really considered to be one of the good guys. So what do I suggest? I would love to see a character like Ruark or Bale, someone that Rand trusts, not only be a secret dark friend, but potentially lead some disastrous betrayal against Rand. I think this would be a great parallel to be happening at the same time as Varen's reveal, by contrasting the fact that something horrible happens in front of us. So for instance, Bale in Era Daman leads the Aiel into a trap and sacrifices a bunch of Aiel to Trollocs, hurting Rand's plans in the area. That would be really dramatic and it would see Bale in a very nefarious role. 
it doesn't have to be Bale. It can be any of the clan chiefs from the Aiel, but I would love to see one of them. But having that run at the same time and then moving to a scene with Varen revealing to Egwene that she's a dark friend and having the audience expecting that Varen is going to betray Egwene. But that's going to add some more drama when Varen does not do that. And she, again, double crosses the shadow. So we might be led to think that Varen's reveal would be just as bad, but the fact that hers is good would be a really dramatic device to contrast the other one. I think those two things happening simultaneously in the same episode would be super dramatic. So why do I want there to be a big betrayal? Well, I think the idea of the shadow seeming as though they might win or having them win victories throughout the books actually adds to the stakes and the tension. It has us questioning who else could be a dark friend. I specifically like the idea that this could be somebody that we did not expect. Rather than having them turn out to be good in the end, I want them to cause real damage. I want that betrayal to feel real. This just plays into what I mentioned in my last video on this topic, that the one thing that the Wheel of Time lacks, at times, is impactful villains that really cause damage uh, and having Rand and his forces really truly hurt by this betrayal is dynamic, it's interesting, and I believe that it advances the story in a positive way. Think to Game of Thrones and how impactful the Red Wedding betrayal was. It's not something that we love to see, but it's something that captivates an audience. I love not knowing who to trust within the story. Now, before moving to my final and for sure my most controversial opinion, I want to take a moment and tell you a bit about this video's sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest depository of audiobooks, and obviously I know many of you already know how high I am on the Wheel of Time audiobooks specifically. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer are masterful in their reading of the books, and it truly gives the series new life to listen to them. Scenes like Dumai's Wells or the Golden Crane scene are so much more powerful when read by Michael Kramer. Now the cool part with Audible is that they're going to give you a new audiobook each month for a really low cost. I not only have all of the Wheel of Time audiobooks, but I also have tons of leadership development and self-development books, which is another one of my passions. It's incredible to be able to drive and learn to be a better person at the same time. Now, if you're new to audiobooks, Audible has a great offer for you just because you're one of my viewers. They're gonna give you a free audiobook with no catch. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Naveless and sign up for the free trial. You can keep your audiobook even if you decide not to keep the service, so you'll have it regardless of whether you pay money to them or not. I know lots of you aren't sure if you'd like audiobooks, so this is a great way for you to check it out risk-free. The best part is that you really support the channel by doing so. Thanks to everybody that supports us already. So let's move on to number three on my list, and certainly my most controversial change. In the books, once Simiraj breaks free and fits the Domination Band onto Rand, she forces Rand to choke him in, and he almost kills her before finding the true power from the Dark One and uses it to bail fire Simiraj and Elza. Now this event is extremely traumatic to Rand and he almost killed one of his girlfriends and arguably the one person that had kept him somewhat sane to that point. So here's my suggestion. Rather than having Rand almost kill men, I'd like to actually see him be forced to do it. Go through with it, knock her off. And here's my rationale. The common theme that you've caught from me is to have the Forsaken and the shadow be more menacing, more impactful, and cause real harm. Without any real harm to our main characters, they aren't really ever a threat. Most of the changes I have advocated for support this, and I truly believe that this is one of the reasons that Game of Thrones was so successful, is because we hated the villains, and they did things that impacted us and our favorite characters. So yes, having Samuraj force Rand to kill men would make her seem awful, which she is, and I actually love her for it. But here's what else it does. It for sure plays into the narrative of driving Rand completely crazy. This is gonna take us even closer to the main theme of Rand actually might be worse than what he's trying to stop. The symmetry of forcing him to yet again kill his loved ones like Ileana was gonna make his eventual redemption and Zen state more impactful and more powerful. We need to actually believe that he might end everything. Min doesn't actually contribute much to the story after this point also, other than with Tuon in the last battle, so I think that this could easily be written around. This also adds to the death toll of our protagonist, which for a story of this size is already incredibly small. I know the argument back would be that having Rand actually kill Min would make him snap, and that I would argue that that's the point. He can truly become focused on his death and his duty as he sees it, and this drives him deeper and deeper into the depths of depression, hopelessness, and death. I think he can still have the same epiphany on Dragon Mount, and I think the Zen Rand story arc still works. And I think it really makes us think that there are consequences to the world and makes us empathize and feel for the terrible things that happen to Rand and those around him, 
despite his incredible power. I think it would be fantastic storytelling, in my opinion at least. So those are my three somewhat controversial opinions about what I believe they can change from the books for the Amazon adaptation. I'm curious what you think of my choices. Let me know in the comments section below on YouTube. Let me quickly remind you about the two contests that I'm currently running. First of all, if you didn't catch my last video launching thegreatblight.com, the website is now live, at least in a beta version. I'm running one contest and one promotion that correspond with the launch of the site. So first of all, the contest. All you have to do is head to www.thegreatblight.com and create a login. That's literally it. And a week from today, I'll be selecting two winners from those that have signed up, and they're each going to get a $25 gift card to shopwheelofTime.com, where you can pick up all kinds of cool Wheel of Time stuff. And now for the promotion. It's, it's really simple. I mentioned to you earlier that fan support is what keeps this website going, and it allows us to hire on some staff. Patreon is the best way to give that support. We're running a promotion that for anybody that signs up for the Black Aja tier or higher, meaning $10 a month or up, you will receive a $10 coupon off of your purchase at shopwheeloftime.com. So meaning you can contribute and save the exact same amount of money. Great deal. And you get to support us. The Patreon is linked in the description of the video. Again, please like the video and make sure to leave a comment on the video and give me your thoughts on my choices. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as it helps with YouTube's metrics. Thank you all for your support. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?